Hi students, continuing on from our discussion of the American way of war, what we're going to look at today is the Vietnam or Vietnamese way of waging war and most importantly we'll look at the contribution of these four key leading groups which is the National Liberation Front or NLF, Viet Cong, the People's Liberation Armed Forces or PLAF and PAVN, the People's Armed Army of Vietnam. This puts part of the silver stop point which deals with the nature and effectiveness of the strategy and tactics employed by the National Liberation Front and the People's Army of Vietnam. When we look at our timeline, we can divide the Vietnamese way of war into six key elements. These focus on from 54 to 59, the People's War, and then the real uh, push of guerrilla warfare from 59 to 63 as American intervention increases. Then the general offensive in 64 to 65 to put pressure on America and potentially push them out of the war because it's seeing sort of more and more dire whether America will escalate or not. From 65 to 67, the resumption of village warfare as the bombing raids become so substantial on the Vietnamese forces and then Infiltration in 1968 and 72, obviously highlighted by the Tet Offensive, and then finally the push to victory in 1975. The Vietnamese forces, there's some key definitions that you'll need to get down. The Viet Minh, these were the fighting forces uh, during the first Indo-Chinese War, and they're sort of the, what we assume to be the sort of archetypal guerrilla warfare units. They founded in May of 1941, and were an organizational nexus to develop a broad national resistance towards the French. They have no base, they have no strict hierarchy, they have no headquarters. Okay, it's more of a movement than it is a um, armed force. They're grounded in the principles of anti-colonialism, nationalism, and patriotism. This would transform into what would become the main fighting force during the oh, Vietnamese War which is the NLF and the Viet Cong, which was formed in December of 1960 and aimed, again, very similarly to broaden the base of revolutionary struggle and provide a vehicle that could attract non-communist elements who oppose the Republic of Vietnam and then do that, obviously, through infiltration into the South. The People's Liberation Armed Forces were founded in 1954, aimed to recruit volunteers to infiltrate the South. Okay, and Obviously, they're just another acronym for Viet Cong. We can sort of summate them all into Viet Cong. Um, and they established the People's Liberation Army, um, and then that was reconstituted in 1961 and it became the PLF. They were commanded uh, by the People's uh, Army of Vietnam, General Nguyen Chi Tan, and they are the regular fighting force of the North Vietnamese. People's War, despite not being regarded um, as a, an effective fighting force, even despite the successes of Dien Bien Phu, the Viet Minh's tactics of guerrilla war underlined in Sun Xu's Art of War was the only appropriate strategy for struggle in the South, given the strength of the Army of the Republic of Vietnam's troops. The reconstituted as a PAF, PLAF, the Viet Cong did not engage in more technologically advanced warfare, unlike the uh, US or the Avon forces, um, nor did they engage in conventional warfare able to organize themselves as guerrilla groups. And this is really important because again and again, we have the under underestimization of the Viet Cong by American troops, which leads in part to their downfall. The organization of the NLF, okay, that we have a main force. Uh, these are sort of trained um, soldiers, trained guerrillas, um, who only perform combat duties. We then have regional forces who worked in local regions um, and they fought in the ubiquitous Calico Noir, or Black Pajamas. And then we have local forces. These are people who are farmers by day and then soldiers by night, and they're really key to the NLF as they um, continue to join their ranks, um, or what we're going to find out in a minute is are they forced. Guerrilla warfare is focused on the goal to arrest the destruction wreaked by the government of Vietnam security forces and bring areas under communist influence through um, propaganda campaigns, influencing the people um, and liberating areas. After the government of Vietnam was driven from an area, it was considered liberated and served as a wider base for guerrilla warfare as a source of tax collection, most importantly to fund the war. 
This was initially directed soft targets, people who had been already sympathetic to Viet Minh um, or dissatisfied with the Diem regime, um, and the Buddhist people who had been uh, seeing what was happening in South Vietnam as a front to their religious beliefs. The Hamlet program um, was key to the, um, the Vietnamese uh, program in terms of attacking it. Uh, in Hamlets, where NFF sympathisers and members were existed, operations could continue. However, what the National Liberation Force needed to do was get in by day and then conduct their operations by night. Um, Hamlets, on the American side, were somewhat effective in reducing infiltration. However, the relocation of villages, as I spoke about during the USA's lecture, brought about the social dislocation and a loss of cultural ancestral ties with the land. Furthermore, in 1959, only about 300 NLF cadres were present in South Vietnam, okay, which by 1965 had ridden to 35,000 conducting infiltration missions, so they have definitely increased their um, operations within the south of Vietnam. How did they get there? By using the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Some key aspects of guerrilla warfare and the key example that you might like to use when writing your essay could be Art Bach. You can read there and pause the video if you'd like to have more of a detailed description of what happened. Um, but it really highlighted the strength of guerrilla warfare as opposed to conventional tactics and how effective they were in uh, bringing about huge losses for the US and the Army of the Republic of Vietnam. In 1964, they launched a, a general offensive, um, and we spoke about earlier attacking the base in Palaku, okay, which is in this area here and of central Vietnam or the central highlands um, and this only comes about because of an increase in NLF troop numbers okay they increase the age limit from 30 to 30 from 30 to 40 and the red areas are forced to join and they use intimidation tactics in order to make people join um, making people disappear beatings kidnappings um, are all very common uh, commonly used by the NLF in order to gain supporters it results in twice the number of troops infiltrating South Vietnam um, and leading to a decrease in covert operations. However, South Vietnam was still cautious of provoking US, um, further US commitment. Remember that US is pursuing a limited war because they want to shift the focus onto Vietnam, Vietnamese fighting Vietnamese instead of it being a foreign war. Um, and they didn't want the North Vietnamese uh, generals are very, very cautious of provoking uh, a full invasion of Vietnam by the US troops. This resulted and this push for troops resulted in the mobilization of the People's Army of Vietnam. This is a regular fighting force. It had already been constructed much earlier, but um, the losses um, of NLF troops um, in bombing campaigns were meant that it was required much more in the south of Vietnam. They were already in the north, um, but they then moved into the south and obviously very cautious of um, committing too many troops and then getting obviously a much more increased um, reaction to PAVM forces discussed this on the slide. Um, America, again, we spoke about underestimation of uh, Vietnamese troops. This is again evident in the fact that they thought that they, if they continue the war of attrition that they would eventually wear down the enemy. However, the People's Army of Vietnam had approximately 2 million men aged between 19 to 49 in North Vietnam who were fit with 170,000 males turning 18 every single year. They had an ample supply of troops. Further support in addition to that from Mao Zedong and equipping units with uh, weapons as well as Chinese presence of anti-aircraft um, engineers, logistics, mine sweeping units in June of 1965. And this is um, somewhat contentious because a lot of the commanders thought that even when they did get rid of the American influence, maybe they'd then have to deal with Chinese influence. Their strategy was about grabbing the belt buckle. Okay, we spoke about earlier in the US the fact that they could use their air mobility. However, the People's Army of Vietnam saw that if they got up close with the enemy, grabbing them by the belt buckle, they couldn't bring artillery or air support on top of the enemy and it became too risky. And, however, this 
um, led to increased obviously casualties for the Vietnamese troops as they didn't have the firepower that regular ground forces had of US troops. They then adapted this into the one slow four quick policy, which we'll discuss in a moment, um, which aimed at engaging the enemy and running before he was able to bring firepower to bear. Also utilize ambushes. Okay, these are sort of the bread and butter of their, their tactics, ambushes, which tie down American forces in security operations instead of conducting those search and destroy offensive patrols. Use of night key and addition of booby, booby traps uh, were effective in demoralizing enemy forces and slowing down US patrols. These are sort of the key principles and key elements of their strategy. You can see they're the one slow, four quick um, VC uh, approach and North Vietnamese Army doctrine. It really focused on slow preparation, um, organization, um, months of planning, and then quick advance, quick assault, quick clearance, and then quick retreat. Guerrilla principles are not only about warfare, but also about political struggle as well. They're trying to get division, they're trying to um, subvert uh, neutral forces into supporting them becoming sympathetic, they're trying to um, also subvert the enemy's forces um, by using propaganda, encouraging desertion. Um, that's why booby traps are so effective because they obviously demoralize the enemy um, and they are also trying to get propaganda to slow discontent and defeatism and dissent, um, which is very, very effective for, for North Vietnam as they uh, continue to have more the US continue to have more and more losses which then leads to uh, problems on the American home front. What we're going to talk about now is some of the sort of ins and outs of guerrilla tactics. Uh, yeah, you do, may not need to use all of these in your uh, essay, however you might like to refer to a few and a couple of examples as a great way to um, demonstrate to markers the depth um, of your knowledge and how you can use evidence to support your point. The encircle point strike reinforcement or fishing aim to encircle a point in order to induce reinforcement and then wipe out those arriving forces. You can read there what sort of the key features are um, and the most important or most uh, notable example of this is in the La Drang Valley um, and, and what happened there even though um, it may be considered a, a, a loss of huge loss for the the Kong, they definitely learned a lot from that battle about how they can engage um, American forces. The block reinforce strike point tactic. This closely resembled conventional tactics, um, which is about overwhelming enemy with superior numbers. Um, but what it did is it placed a smaller force in front of the advancing troops of reinforcements and delayed their um, involvement. This is really um, most importantly used during the Quan Yang campaign, uh, during which South Vietnamese troops were surprised by two regiments of VC. Um, the small number was pinned down um, and reinforcements who weren't able to get there to the next day um, because of, they were engaged in a smaller force, um, which resulted in 50% um, South Vietnamese casualties. Very, very effective strategy. Surprise attack from a distance, raids, um, these were common as they obviously used mortar strikes. Um, some aircraft were, were used by the North Vietnamese, obviously supplied by the Chinese and the USSR. Um, and this was obviously uh, very easy to conduct because it resulted in very limited casualties for the North Vietnamese. Mobile attack, this is fight when you're short of wind and we're treating most not short of wind. This is, seems obviously very easy in principle, but the maneuverability that you need as a commander in order to attack and then retreat and pull out um, and shifting the point of attack, these are all very advanced combat tactics which take years to train and years to prepare and only are available to the guerrillas because of their because of their ability to um, the geography of the landscape and their knowledge of it. We then have gap penetration, which is focused on the um, entering the enemy territory by making use of gaps between troop units and point assault. If you want to pause the video here, you can read through what they are. Finally, infiltration. Um, this is sort of, again, bread and butter of Viet Cong, Viet Cong tactics. Um, and also temporary defense. 
um, which they use a small number of troops to occupy a very wide frontage to engage uh, a patrol force and then um, a main force is placed in a suitable position in the rear to wipe out the enemy by seeking its weak point and then effecting an attack. And what they would do is the small troop would engage, then retreat, drawing out the American or South Vietnamese forces, and then they'd be engaged in a much, much larger force which they weren't expecting. Coochie tunnels are sort of central to the maneuverability on the battlefield, um, and they're located in the sort of um, southern corner of Vietnam. PLF renewed use of terror tactics um, coined by MACV and Republic of Vietnam commanders aimed to destroy infrastructure and community assets. The benefit of these tunnels were the fact that they could um, retreat in daylight hours and then reappear at night and conduct their guerrilla operations. You could see the infiltration in the south and this is obviously during the, the largest infiltration project which is the Tet Offensive um, in which you know 200 US and South Vietnamese sites are attacked pretty much simultaneously um, between late January and early February. Um, and this was only able to be conducted through the use of the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Their effectiveness, uh, some of the key advantages that the Vietnamese forces had over um, America was the fact that there was no language problems, the fact that they could connect much more with the people than what America could. Their knowledge, as I spoke about before, with uh, being able to um, shift the point of attack and, and use guerrilla warfare because it was really focused on their knowledge of the topography of the land. They gained the sympathy of people as the South Vietnamese government was highly unstable um, and not well organized and didn't really have popular support. Um, they had used propaganda very effectively in unifying people. They had great backers in the Chinese and also the USSR in terms of investing in uh, resources and, and equipment. They had extensive knowledge of guerrilla tactics. They were silent and unpredictable. They had a popular support base and their cause connected with the colonial history and the fact that they had French and now American um, takeover and you know, in between that as well, Japanese. The only negatives were the fact they were outnumbered um, and that they the lack of, of firepower. And you can pause here if you want to read uh, Caitlin Tamage's um, excerpt on the um, effectiveness of the PLF. Moving on, again, they use very, very similar tactics, ambushes, um, attacks at night, um, raids um, in order to, in the spring offensive, in which they try to attack those enclaves and the last remaining American troops. Um, this is at a point in time as well where America is shifting to the Vietnamese ice feminization of the war um, and the PLF are mainly fighting um, South Vietnamese troops as opposed to the US that are much more effective against them. Finally we then have the push to victory um, as PLF forces sweep through the country and then converge on Saigon, the last stronghold of American intervention. So I hope that provides a overview of NLF tactics, um, as well as that of the People's Army of Vietnam.